Hello, my name is Mike Gag, and in this video we are going to talk about constructors in C Sharp. Now as we begin here, you're going to notice our, our person class is missing its stuff, right? Uh, basically, I, I, did, uh, I emptied out the main and I emptied out our person class because we're going to redesign it a little bit just to make the conversation about structures uh, uh, more uh, poignant, so um, more focused. So what I want to do is I'm going to, I want my person class to store a person's name and a person's age. Okay, we're getting rid of the favorite color and stuff like that. Uh, and we're just going to go ahead and write this out real quick. So I'm going to do private and age. All right, uh, private string name. Awesome. And then public int age. This is going to be our property. And we're going to say get return age set. Now I'm not actually going to do data validation. I'm just going to say uh, validation goes here. This is for just speed. Uh, and then age equals value. All right. Uh, and then public string name uh, get return name set uh, name equals value uh, uh, wait a minute I want to do the whole validation goes here that way if you're following along you can still see where you would have it all right, and then uh, let's do public string output person uh, just like this, and we will say uh, return string dot format. I'm just gonna do it this way again, uh, and we're gonna say uh, my name is and my age is uh, name age. Awesome. Okay, so hey, that, that's real quick. There's our class. Fantastic. All right. And so what I want to do is over here in program, I'm going to say person, my person equals new person. And then I'm going to do console.writeline. My person dot uh, output person. Actually, now that I'm looking at this, I'm a, I'm a little dissatisfied with the design that I've chosen. Um, output person, I mean, you can do that. It's fine. But really, there's a more uh, elegant built-in solution that's called the two-string method. Uh, so, for instance, if I uh, do my person dot, you see two-string right here. And you might wonder what that two-string method is. I'll show you. We'll, we'll run it. And then I see variable example dot person because that's all the two-string method does. It tells me you know, it's default what it is, it's a, it's a person. But we can utilize the two-string method, and we should utilize the two-string method. So I'm coming back, I'm leaving this as my person dot two-string. I'm coming back here, and I'm getting rid of this output person, and I'm just gonna call it two-string. I like that better, that, that's that's better in my opinion. Uh, now, two-string is, is a method that the class already has. Uh, as we saw, we were able to use two-string. In order to override that with our own two-string, uh, we are gonna do public override to string all right um, so this is what it should look like now public override string to string and that's what it returns two string methods never take anything and they always return a string okay so let's go ahead and run this now um, and we see my name is blank and my age is zero all right so what do we know there's nothing in this class this class is empty all right it's got uh, empty variables so to go ahead and, and create something here, I can do my person dot age equals 20 and my person dot name equals John. All right, there's nothing wrong with that. That's completely fine. Um, and we create our class and uh, my name is John, my age is 20, fantastic. Now, our class here has two variables in it, all right? And we just uh, we just right here uh, in code, you know, we put two variables in there. 
However, a lot of times classes will have 10, 15, 20, depending on the size of class variables. And every time you create an object of this class, do you want to have 20 lines of filling the variables? I don't I don't think so. That's it's a complete pain. It's a complete waste of time and resources. All right. We can do something better. All right. We can use something I like to call a constructor. And I like to call it because that's what it's called. Um, a constructor, if you think about it, this is the way I like to, 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 to liken it, okay, um, is if you uh, uh, design cars, right, and you draw a picture of a car, or a blueprint or whatever, and I'm sure it's something, it's not called drawing, I'm sure there's more technical term for it, um, you'll have a picture of a car, all right, a blueprint for a car. Can you get in and can you drive that car? No, it's not a real car. It's just a picture of a car, right? That's what our class is here. This is not a real person. It's a picture of a person, all right? It's not an object or anything like that, even a highly abstracted one. What you do is you take this blueprint to a factory, and the factory builds it for you and gives you a real car based on your specifications, all right? That's what a constructor is. A constructor is like our factory. A constructor builds an object for us and then gives it to us, okay? You've been using a constructor so far, you don't even realize it. This is a constructor. It's just a constructor that doesn't do anything besides create some memory, all right? It's what we call our default constructor. Every class gets a default constructor until you create a new constructor. Once you create a new constructor, your default constructor goes away, all right? Um, there's some argument over terminologies that I just used there, but basically that's the way I like it. Your default constructor is just constructed as given to you, and when you create some other constructor, your default constructor goes away. A lot of times people will call any no argument constructor default constructor. I'm not saying that's right. I'm not saying that's wrong. Uh, that's just the way I'm saying it. All right. Um, so person, my person equals new person. We are calling a constructor that doesn't do anything. All right, so let's go ahead and, and make a constructor that does something, okay? Because uh, we, we, we always want a constructor to sort of make things work correctly, all right? Uh, so first off, what we're going to do is we're going to create a no-argument constructor, or what we could call a default constructor, all right? Uh, even though I just said a, a contradictory statement. Um, basically, we just want we just want a baseline constructor, all right? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say uh, public person. And this is our constructor, all right? Now, we're in here we're gonna say age equals zero and name equals nothing, all right? This is just our space to set default values. It really doesn't need to exist, really doesn't. Um, our default constructor, the ones built in, it did this for us, all right? But the second we start creating more constructors, then we're going to need this one here. So um, just bear in mind, now whenever our program runs, here, I'll put a breakpoint in here. Uh, whenever we create a new person, we're going to see our constructor runs. The default, the built-in one isn't running anymore. It doesn't exist anymore. By virtue of creating a constructor, uh, old constructors, uh, the default constructor goes away. All right, and here we're just setting our values. So let me stop this here. Um, now, a little bit about the anatomy of a constructor. A constructor has no return type, as you can see. A constructor should be public, um, though there is an argument to be made that you could make it private, but we're not going to. Um, We'll talk about that later. Uh, public and the constructor has the same name as the class, spelled exactly the same way, the same capitals and everything. Person and person. All right. In this case, we have a no argument constructor, and inside we're just doing some initialization. So that's that's pretty simple. All right. So we have a constructor and it works perfectly. Well, perfectly for what it does, which is nothing. Okay. Uh, just set some default values. All right. So now, uh, let's go ahead and build a constructor that, that does something useful. Now, in, in C Sharp, you can have as many constructors as you want, okay? Um, they all have to follow the same rules of no return values, the same name, uh, but we can overload them. We can, you know, have multiples of the same name. Uh, and so I'm going to create a, another constructor, and this one is going to be public person 
int age um, string name. I don't like how I'm doing that. Um, I just he, long story short, um, these will have the same name, so there's going to be a little bit of conflict, which we can resolve uh, using a scope resolution. However, I, I'm just trying to keep this simple. So uh, I'm going to do int l age for local age and string for l name uh, for local name. All right. Um, if I was actually producing this. Um, for commercially or professionally, whatever, I would still use age and name, uh, and I would just use resolution modifier so we didn't get those confused. Um, and I'll show you why here in a second. Uh, and inside here, I'm going to do age equals L age, and name equals L name. All right, so now we have two constructors, and depending on what variables we pass in here, or if we don't pass variables at all, the compiler will know which constructor we're using. So I'll come back here, and I will say uh, person, my person equals new person. Let me get rid of these. New person, 20, and uh, John. Now, the reason I talked about age and name is because look at the IntelliType shows us L age now and L name. I'd want that just to be age and name. So the user, the user can be like, hey, I want to build a person. What goes inside here? Okay, well, they have one of two. One is a no argument constructor. And two, oh, okay, needs an age and a name. All right? And the more concise you can make that, the better. All right? So just like that. Now we were able to initialize our values using our constructor. And we run it. And my name is John. My age is 20. Fantastic. So now, without those extra two lines of code, we still accomplish the exact same thing by using our constructor. All right. So that's it's quite fantastic. Awesome. And so, all right. So that's well and good. There, we have successfully used a two-argument constructor. But why stop there? What if the person only wants to provide a name but not an age, or an age but not a name? All right. Um, and generally, if you're creating like a commercial piece of software, you will have all sorts of different constructors. So I'll do int l age. And inside here, we're simply going to do age equals l age. And then we're going to have uh, public person string l name. Oops. And we will have name equals l name. All right. Now we've got a whole variety of constructors. I mean, let's check this out. What if I did my person and just passed in 20? So we'll see my name is blank and my age is 20. So age is set, but name is not. Or if we just passed in John, and then we'd see my name is John and my age is zero. So John gets set, but age doesn't, right? And which constructor gets used is dependent entirely upon what we passed in here. The compiler just figures out which one to use at runtime, all right? So that's awesome. Okay, we got that going for us now. So that, I mean, basically sums up constructors. I'm not going to say a whole lot on here because you know you can look it up if you're curious. You should already know some of this stuff, so uh, I'm not getting too crazy with it now. Uh, so that's our constructors. Let's talk about this, okay? Because this is it's bad design. All right. A couple things. All right. Let's say we have some some name validation here. All right, so let's let's come back here and do this. Let's say uh, if uh, value equals nothing, and then uh, we'll just say I don't like this. Actually, let's do let's do if value does not equal Carl. We're gonna pick on Carl again. Um, name equals value. We're not gonna throw an error uh, if they give the wrong one. We're just not going to set it. So if name does not equal Carl, use it. If name equals Carl, we're not going to do anything. There's no, we're not setting any value if the name does not equals Carl, equal Carl. Um, again, not the greatest of designs, but that's what we're dealing with. All right. And so look at let, 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 let's try this out here. So I'm going to do, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to say, I'm just going to use the the default constructor, and I'm going to say my person dot name equals Carl. All right. And when I run this, 
we are going to see my name is blank and my age is zero. Carl did not get set because it's against the rules. Carl comes in here, says, oh, no, we don't want any Carls, and, and so no Carls, all right? So it does not work. However, if I do person my person equals new person, Carl, well, now look at that. I've bypassed my own rules, all right? Uh, that is rather unfortunate. My constructor just let me do something I'm not supposed to be able to do. My system says no Carls, and my constructor just ruined it, all right? The reason I talk about putting data validation in our set methods is that it, it makes for what I like to call a bottleneck, where uh, if you use it appropriately, everything works correctly. So in my constructors, instead of doing age equals zero, I really could do age equals zero. And name equals nothing. The capitals mean I'm using the properties. Again, I'm avoiding working with raw data, even inside my own class, to protect me from myself. As you can see, I obviously can't trust myself because I already broke one of my own rules. All right? And so now, now we're using our properties inside our constructor. And let's run it again. Oh, here, let me go back to my code so this makes sense. Um, so still we're trying to pass in Carl. It worked a second ago, and now it no longer does. My set method is still preventing it from happening. That's what I want. That worked great. Now my constructors aren't breaking the data validation because they are using my properties. All right. Now, uh, this is still a bit messy. Consider all this redundant code. L look at this. I mean, it's all pretty much the same code, isn't it? And this is only two variables. What if we had 100? All right, we you probably shouldn't have 100 in the class, but just you know, for as an idea, right? Would you really want the same 100 lines in this constructor, in this constructor, in this constructor, in this constructor? This is only four constructors. I've written classes with 20 or 30 constructors, depending on the variables in the class and what I wanted people to be able to assign, all right? And how flexible or what the purpose of the class was, you know? So that's a lot of redundant code. It is. It's a lot of completely useless redundant code. So we can do something in C Sharp that's called cascading a constructor. Um, in C++, it's called delegating a constructor. Um, you can call it different things. But basically, it's where one constructor calls another constructor. All right? And the way I like it, it, this is this is awesome design, by the way, because it creates more of these bottlenecks. We want bottlenecks. We want places that focus all the code in one spot, all right, uh, to avoid redundancies and things like that. So what I generally do is, is my rule of thumb for this is I'm going to move this. I generally like to organize my constructors based on the number of parameters or arguments. Um, so I start with my lightest, then I move on to my heaviest. Now, my heaviest is the one I want. The constructor that allows the user to input the, the highest number of variables is the constructor we want to use. This is where all of our code is going to go. All right. So in this case, we only have two lines, but this is where the meat of our code goes. Every other constructor is simply going to call this constructor. So we have one place for our code and one place for our data validation, and everything else points to that one place. All right, so let's start off simple here. Person, all right, person, we're gonna get rid of these here. Person with no arguments is just gonna set default values. So what we can do is we can say person colon this, all right, meaning this here, this very object, all right, and I'm gonna say zero and, and then I can even bring these up here. So one line. So what this constructor does now, oh, wait a minute. Yep, don't need that. No semicolon, okay. So this constructor, we can actually see this. I'm gonna put a breakpoint inside my, my full constructor. And I'm gonna use my no argument constructor, all right? So this constructor is gonna get called. And we're going to see this breakpoint hit in this constructor, all right? And I'll run it. And there we go, just like I, I predicted. Uh, this constructor here is going to pass in zero and empty quotes, so default, so no, null values, basically, inert values. All right. So now, again, all of the work is being done in one method. Well, let's look at our age here, our, our person L age, where the user is passing in just the age. 
Well, we'll get rid of this here, and we will say colon this. And age, if I go to my, my age is the first variable, and then string the name. So I'm going to do L age, empty quotes, like that. Now, if the user passes in just the age, just the age gets passed into this one, and empty quotes get passed into here. Again, we're reusing. All right, and then we'll do the person one. So person one is going to be this uh, zero and L name, uh, that one, and just like that. And then finally, we have this constructor. Great. So now we have four constructors. Only one constructor actually does work. The other three just call the one constructor that does work. All right. And this constructor calls our properties. I can just reduce those down a bit. Calls our properties so that we have proper data validation. Now, at this point, our class is fairly well designed. Okay. We've got data validation for our age and our name. All right. And I'll expand that back out. Um, it's not good data validation. It's just a comment here in some junk about Carl. Um, but we have data validation for our two variables. Our two variables are private. And we have four fully functioning constructors. Right? The, the user is never going to know that only one constructor actually does work. The user is going to see four constructors and is going to be able to use four constructors. And they'll never be the wiser. All right? And so now and, and we're using a properly overridden two string method. All right. So our class is actually really good. This is a good class. All right. And this is a solid basis. Uh, for working with object orient or objects in C sharp in the future. All right. Uh, so that's going to conclude it for this video. Um, at this point, we're done talking about the anatomy of a class. Uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about uh, turning our classes into their own libraries, uh, which is just sort of like neat to know, uh, but we won't necessarily be using it all that much. Um, and then in the next part, we're going to talk about things like inheritance and polymorphism. Uh, I trust me, I assure you, we're almost there. Uh, we just I, we're almost to the Windows programming. I know it's. I'm dragging this on a bit, but I really want you guys to have a solid understanding of the C-sharp syntax. That way, when we start talking about Windows programming, we can just sort of get in there and start working with Windows programming. We don't have to worry about syntax and things like that. So, um, so yeah, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you.